Greetings, and welcome to another installment of the SANS ICS Concept Overviews. I'm Don C. Weber of Cutaway Security and a certified SANS instructor. Most people think that honeypots are used to understand how attackers attack systems and networks. This is only one aspect of honeypots. Honeypots are actually an excellent method for intrusion detection and, when properly implemented, significantly reduce false positive events. In this ICS concept overview, I'm joined by Michael Weingard, an expert in ICS honeypots. We will talk about what a honeypot is and how it can be implemented within a control network with minimal impact to the process. If you enjoy this video and the topics we cover in the SANS ICS concept overviews, please be sure to like and subscribe to this channel. Leave a comment if you have a question about this topic or suggestions for future content. The next SANS ICS concept video, we are going to discuss honeypots. And, uh, you know, I, I started reading my buddy's book, uh, Chris Sanders. He wrote a book, Intrusion Detection, Honeypots. It's an excellent book. And I recommend that if you're interested in doing intrusion detection using honeypots, uh, that you take a look at his book. But I didn't want to talk about it. I didn't get Chris Sanders. Actually, Michael Vingard, uh, Vingard, uh asked me uh, if I would be interested in talking about honeypots for this, uh, for the ICS uh, concepts videos. And absolutely, I wanted to get somebody that has implemented ICS honeypots uh, out there in control networks. And so uh, Michael's here to discuss us, uh, discuss this with us. So uh, Michael, why don't you let people know who you are and your experience around uh, honeypots, and then I'll start asking some questions. So please introduce yourself. Thank you very much, and thanks for, uh, for this. Up. And for starters, I would like to say the book that uh, Chris wrote is absolutely amazing. Uh, I wish that when I started for doing deception technology and honeypot six years ago, I, I wish that book has been uh, available at that time. Uh, it, it comes with uh, my best recommendation. Anyway, uh, my name is uh, Michael. I originally have uh, 15 years of experience in traditional IT security, uh, pen testing, audit, uh, business continuity planning, and a lot of other uh, different things. And for the last six years, I've been working with the deception technology and industrial security. And doing a lot of interesting stuff. I've been on most of the SAMS classes within uh, ICS. Uh, and uh, I think what's really amazing to see how something that actually runs every day's life, like it runs water, it runs power. And I couldn't imagine a better way to help securing uh, stuff like that that really run our everyday lives. Excellent. So uh, help us understand uh, what is a honeypot? That's a, that's a really good question, Don. And very often when I'm doing presentation, people approach me afterwards and said, okay, so this is what's actually what honeypot was. Uh, because honeypot in itself is not a new concept. It, it dates back like almost two decades, but for various reasons, it hasn't been deployed that much as our traditional like uh, firewall or IDS system. But, but in short, say that uh, a honeypot is a device that you liberally deploy either on the internet or in your own uh, network with the things of uh, see if it actually is being attacked. Uh, that's also a reason why you, sometimes people call this a uh, canary. It's back to the old days when you had the miners. They had, uh, when they walked into the mine, they had a little bird, a canary bird, and if it fell down, then you could see something was really, really wrong. And that's the same thing that Honeypot has. Uh, you know, there shouldn't actually be any interaction or communication with a Honeypot. If there are, it's something you need to investigate because then you most likely have a breach in your systems. Uh, so, in I'm familiar with deploying honeypots uh, within corporate environments, but you know, when we start thinking about, we're talking about industrial control systems. So how would a honeypot within uh, an industrial control environment differ from a honeypot within a corporate network? It will differ in, uh, in a few points. Uh, like first of the, it's very obvious that in most industrial networks, you don't have internet connection. Uh, most of the IT honeypots, uh, IT uh, honeypots I've been working with uh, require internet connection because they're going into a fancy dashboard in the cloud. But uh, obviously, we don't have the same uh, option here in uh, in industrial network. Uh, uh, 
ICS honey pot would typical uh, mimic some of the usual services or protocols that you can be seen in an in industrial network. Uh, it's uh, something like you would like it to be simulating like a PLC or a HMI, human machine interface, or something similar that the attacker would expect to find here. Because the whole idea is also that the device deployed should be something that would be believable, and it should be, you know, something that the attacker would expect to see in that part of the network. So you're, you're talking about uh, listening on a port like... I'm always picking on Modbus, but, you know, Modbus or, or SIP, you know, that those services run on specific ports. So you'd have a, a service that's uh, listening on that port on a system uh, that is not an actual PLC, or would you actually use PLCs themselves? It, it depends on, on the deployment. Uh, I very often like to use real equipment uh, for, for this because that it, it also makes the deception to, to last longer. Uh, but, but you're absolutely right, uh, a typical P, uh, ICS honeypot would be something that, in example, had Modbus in, in the services because that, that would be something people would expect to see. And uh, again, based on, on how it's, it's built, it should also be something when you interact with it, like if you're sending a valid Modbus command, then you would hopefully you should get something back as, as what you was expected. Again, to have the deception to last as long as possible, to generate as much alert as possible, and to give the blue team, the defender, as much time as possible to see, okay, something is happening on network, we, we need to do something about it. So when we were talking about this uh, before, before we started recording, uh, you'd mentioned the difference between low, medium, and high interactive honeypots. So can you tell me what, uh, um, what you meant by that? Yeah, uh, of course, in, indeed I can do that, because that very often also, uh, in terms that, that make a lot of people that you can get, get into a lot of good argument over, but at least I can give like my take on, on a low, medium, and a high interaction honeypot. Uh, a low interaction honeypot is something really, really simple. It might just be uh, like a TCP listener, like a port open. And if somebody is trying to, to connect with it, then you raise an alarm, but that's really uh, nothing more than, than this. So the, so the deception value or the time on the target, how much can you get the attacker to interact with that, that would be, that would be pretty uh, low. Then if we're moving up a bit, then we have a medium interaction honeypots, especially in ICS network. That would be when you would actually be able to send a Modbus command and you would get something back. You would okay. be able to interact it in, in, in some kind of, uh, of way. So the deception would last a bit, a bit longer. And then last but not least, you have high interaction honeypot is a uh, preferable like real system or something that mimics like like the real thing so that would be that if you're doing a port scan example it would say based on your you are manipulating with mac addresses so that nmap would say oh yes this is a semen system or oh, yes this is a an embryo, or this is some kind of, of what it's expected to be the ports that would typically be associated with that would be open an example, uh, Moxa is an exoserial device that would have port 4800 and 4900 open. And, and so in attempt to make it as realistic as possible and to get the attacker to interact with it as much as possible, because the more he or she interacts with it, the more alerts uh, you would raise over this. That's interesting, and, uh, um, and and I actually get, uh, understand it a, a lot better from that description. Uh, you know, and to to just kind of make some clarifications around there, so that the low interaction honeypot um, is some type of service that. Um, it, it's actually not, uh, when I think about that, I think of honey ports and uh, in the fact that it will accept a connection, but won't send a response. Just the fact that uh, we'll use Modbus as an example, port 502. Uh, typically when you interact with a, a Modbus service, um, you, you send a request and then it comes, you, you send a, re a response back. Uh, but in the case of low interaction, just the connection to that port sets an alert, but there's no response that comes back. Is uh, It uh, basically just identifies that some bit, something tried to connect there on that port, uh, but the attacker doesn't have any realization that you're noting that and logging it on the back end. So that would be a better example, or that would be a, a deeper description of low interaction. Would that, is that correct? That, 
that's uh, very correct. We can also do uh, for people who are familiar with mud bus, then a, a medium or high interaction honeypot would actually not only receive the data but would also respond back. An example, if you're doing a mud bus uh, function 43, it basically means what kind of device are you, or what uh, what what kind of uh, vendor who could have made you. Uh, that would be a high interaction honeypot would reply back with, with that uh, and, and giving a, a valid reply on, on this one. Interesting. So things like in, in things that I think you know that Chris Chris mentioned in his book uh, and that I think are, are really useful in these are honey uh, honey accounts and honey tokens. And by honey accounts, I mean uh, some type of account, especially within a Windows uh, Active Directory environment. If that if that uh, uh, control network has that type of implementation, or really just uh, um, you know noting any like special accounts uh, on a local systems. Uh, those accounts shouldn't be accessed, and if but if you have them there, you can set up alerts around those specifically, and uh, realize that somebody is going after accounts that they shouldn't be. So that would probably be uh, um, in the medium category. Uh, Honey tokens, uh, you know, what, what's your familiar? Uh, so do you uh, have experience with like documents that are deployed on Windows shares or other locations? Is that something that has uh, um, been successful in your experience? It is indeed, it is indeed. Um, again, and there can also be some discussion of like a honey token. Let's first of all say a honey token. Uh, one of the, 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 the way it can be used is that you embed it into a document. And whenever that document is being opened, it, it fires out an alert. And, and very often, uh, there are a lot of uh, various services who, who do that. And the only requirement is, of course, they should have uh, internet connectivity. So just imagine that somebody has stolen your intellectual property, go home and then start to open that document. That document would then fire out an alert and you would be able to see, okay, somebody has just opened my project file from a IP address in country XYZ. Um, we, we might have a problem here. So, so yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, and, and actually, in my, when I first started learning about that uh, um, from Tom Liston, uh, he was calling those, uh, it was actually Tom and Ed, they were calling those web bugs. And, uh, you know, and uh, I, I can see how it can be considered a token. So, so the, first, the, the first detection would be actually accessing that file in the internal network. Uh, if that didn't uh, uh, produce an alarm or if, uh, if that wasn't followed up on, uh, the fact that, and, and I like this concept a lot, if you have, uh, if your document should be within your control network, and when you open it up, if that attempts to make a connection out um, that web token or that that honey token or that web bug, uh, and that's not that's no longer in your control network, even though your control network's not connected to the internet, but all of a sudden this web token makes a um, uh, makes a connection request, uh, that's a pretty good indicator of that that some something has leaked. Now, I, I would assume that there's a lot of uh, extra setup that you need to do outside of your control network. And so that would be a, probably like a control network part of the project. Uh, but I, I think that's pretty interesting. And I think that would be pretty useful, especially in those uh, uh, cases of understanding if attackers have exfiltrated your information. Exactly. And, and just also to, to clarify, you can also do it that even because in, in, in a lot of industrial systems, you don't have any internet at all. But as you mentioned, uh, interesting I, I see is also that you ask it to connect to uh, an internal uh, resource as well. Um, that's also something you can do really, really easy. So when, when people are accessing this, or just, you know, as you mentioned, just by the self that they're actually accessing uh, the, the documents, then it files an alert. We could see somebody just accesses our fake network uh, diagram. Oh, that's pretty interesting. Oh, right. That's probably something we should look into. Yeah, absolutely. So, and when people start talking about uh, ICS honeypots, uh, part of part of them think about what we're talking about, which is the detection. You know, using these as a security control to help identify when attackers are, are in our networks. Uh, but other people start thinking about what I consider uh, the um, uh, 
honey net projects. Uh, and, and actually in the, in the ICS 410 class, everything we've been talking about, we consider low interaction honey pots, meaning that the, the low has a low, medium, high aspect to it, but the high interaction honey pots are actually the honey, uh, honey net projects that simulate a, a full control network env environment uh, that uh, aren't connected anything to anything physical, like actually not controlling anything, but do have the all of the workstations, all of the PLCs that are in place, the services running, so you have network traffic and so forth. And so that what I would consider a high interactive project. So what's your uh, what experience do you have with uh, those types of projects? Uh, well, uh, I just uh, last year I did a project together with two researchers from Cambridge University. And we basically deployed a lot of real ICS equipment on the, on the internet. And then, you know, just was sitting back, waiting, doing a full PCAP, uh, and then see, okay, what, what, who would actually attack us? And uh, just like uh, other research, as an example, a uh, big shout out to Stephen Hill from Trent Micro, who has done similar things, is that the attack space in itself is not that big. Uh, most of them you can see is either, you know, uh, someone who definitely don't know how, what to do in an industrial network, what that don't make them any less dangerous at all. And, and then you have a lot of the usual players like Shoda and Rapid7 and, and other things. But the, the, the interesting part was over the course of 14 months, we actually was able to do it so well. So we could find several uh, attackers who actually was using uh, zero days within our network. So it, it was so realistic, which also made good sense because it was actually a, a almost real industrial network. The only thing was that if it was being like really, really breach, it didn't have any effect because it wasn't a real production. But otherwise it was, true to two words right and that you know I, mean, I i like to make that clarification especially when i'm teaching the class uh, because we don't expect people to make these high interactive honeypots these these honey nets that are going to attract attackers to it i think one of the biggest uh, um uh, things that we need to clarify is the fact by by deploying a honey pot within a control network you're not necessarily inviting attackers to come in you're not exposing it to the internet uh you're using it as a control, like we said, uh, to, you know, if to detect unusual activity, to investigate it because it's just an event, it could be somebody just connecting to something. Uh, but we don't want to recommend that people uh, are implementing these full blown control system, honey net projects uh, within their environments, unless they have a research group, you know, unless they're like, Trend Micro or, or some of the other uh, Dragos or Nozomi or you know those, some of those other ven vendors that want to gather that information, leave that to them. Don't do it within a, a control network. That, that's a really, really sane advice, uh, Dan. And also don't try to deploy such stuff on your company DMC network because that, that bird is not going to fly when the press find out that you have a lot of old uh, equipment standing on the internet, on your corporate net. Good luck in explaining, oh, this is just us doing research on honeypots. You're never going to, to get that history revoked again. Uh, absolutely. So uh, another thing that when, when I start thinking about this, uh, I'm concerned about management and logging. And you, and you brought up, uh, you, you talked about the management aspect of and you know uh, from a corporate environment that one of the biggest differences is that the ICS honeypots have to be managed uh, within that environment. In other words, you can't have that cloud. I mean, if you're configured for that cloud connectivity, then possibly you could ha could have that in there. But most organizations aren't going to have that uh, internet connectivity, uh, and I wouldn't recommend opening that up if you don't already have that in place. So, so we talked about that already, but what we haven't talked about is logging. So uh, some of those solutions that we talked about, the corporate solutions, they log to the cloud. Uh, and you know, what, what's your recommendation within the ICS control environment? Uh, what do you, uh, what, what, what's your experience around logging and alerting and response? Well, I can see, you know, just uh, in order to, to show the device, uh, this is, you know, just, uh, that's just a single board computer. Can you, can you uh, hold that up again? It, that, that was real quick. Can you hold it up just again real Sorry. quick? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and just yeah. kind of flip it over just to show. 
Oh, there we go. Yeah, so it's just a, it looks like just a, like a, a little NUC or a, a Intel computer. Yeah, it's, it's just a little uh, single board uh, computer. And uh, we just utilize uh, whatever protocols which is normally used in the system. And that would normally be like syslog. Um, and then we would just export the logs into whatever the SIEM or log management so solution the client has uh, on site. And uh, a good recommendation very often when I starting this kind of, uh, you know, uh, walkthroughs, uh, they very often say, well, but we don't have a SIEM system. We don't have a log management system. We don't have anything in our OG environment. And then when you start to circle the plant, you meet either Bob or Jane, and they said, oh, by the way, we actually do have a log management server. Or we do have a SIEM system for XYZ. And then it's very often you can pick it sailing to that system as well, you know, because the cool thing about honeypots is that ideally you would never ever get an alert from this because that's, you know, one of the big advantages about it. So, so it doesn't fill up the, the lock uh, space at, at all, or hopefully not. Otherwise you have some other concerns. Yeah. And that's, you know, I mean, when it, one of the, uh, it was always uh, interesting uh, within the, the corporate environment when we're, uh, the locations that I've deployed these uh, is, uh, and we, we don't necessarily have this problem too much in the control environment, but uh, a lot of our honey pots were getting scanned by our, uh, it, uh, our vulnerability management systems. And so all of a sudden we get all of these alerts for, and, and have to follow up on it. Uh, and it, so that would generate a lot of alerts and we'd have to, you know, uh, communicate between teams to actually tune things so that uh, either to avoid them or to realize that the messages coming or the connections coming from this system uh, were not actual alerts. So that's, uh, that's pretty interesting. Definitely, definitely. Because uh, that's um, a, a cool thing also with, especially the ICS Honeypot is that they don't need a lot of tweaking. If, if you know the environment, you basically need, you know, one or more uh, IP addresses for the Honeypot and what kind of services would normally be expected to be found. Uh, a good example is that uh, in, in the US, you would normally in an in a energy uh, network, you would expect to see an example DNP3, but that protocol is not being used at all in Europe. That would be something called ICCP instead. Mm -hmm. So again, also knowing a bit of, on, on the environment, and of course, if you did by Modbus, nobody would, would find that suspicious because Modbus is, is all over the place. Yeah, and oh, I was just thinking of something. Um, the oh, so the the overhead for this, you know, and and when we're talking about security controls and for honeypots, that uh, you know, this is going to probably be a new project within the uh, control network. Uh, so how much tuning? You know, obviously there is going to be some maintenance. There's going to be some management. Uh, but so what what is your experience around the um, uh, the person hours that are required to implement, tune, and uh, maintain this? Uh, well, of course, it's, it's hard to give a general reply, but but, in, but based on my experience, that, that is not something that takes a, a lot of time. Uh, if you know your network, an uh, example, what IP addresses is available, it, it's, it, to be quite honest, it's, it's a really small project. And also, uh, you should also, when, when you're starting this kind of project, always start, start small. Uh, I, I've been in together with people said we have like 150 plants all over the world that's cool let's start up very small let's start with the two most likely uh, plants or, or networks that uh, you know so you know start small but but have, have great visions but but in general it, it don't take a lot of time uh, rather than in other uh, IT systems that you need to adopt for industrial things that very often take a lot of time because you need to, to train it and, and see, okay, no, just because you don't understand this traffic doesn't mean it malicious. In Modbus, I've seen a couple of uh, IT or IT security vendors actually flagging Modbus because they said it's an unknown protocol, hence it must be malicious. No, it's not. Excellent. So, uh, and you've you've really answered all of my questions. So, what are your some of your experiences that you've obviously deployed this within uh, some uh, industrial control networks? 
in, you know, so do you have any experiences that you'd like to, you know, uh, hopefully successes um, within the, uh, um, uh, within this? So what are your experiences around actually implementing these within the control networks? Yeah, I, I would like to, to, one of my favorite war stories was uh, at a client when I was deploying this and we were, you know, set it up and showing a little bit of and then suddenly start coming up with an alert. I was just like, what? And, and you would just hear, it was a vein needle in the room. Everyone just went absolutely silent and said, uh, okay, is this, uh, you know, couldn't it be like uh, some owner said, no, no, this, 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 somebody is trying to breach the honeypot we literally had set up just a few hours ago. And then we, we you know, dig a bit deeper into it and then we said, hey, so we called one of the engineers, uh, hi, Bob. Uh, are you trying to access this IP address? Oh, yeah, uh, you know, it's, it's part of the new schedule. I, I need to, to, to configure this uh, device. And the guy has just misremembered the IP address because it was very close to one of the real devices. So uh, this engineer was trying to configure the honeypot and he couldn't find out why he was not able to do it in the right way. And in the meantime, you could just hear everyone in, in, at the sub group was just like, Ooh, that was just a false positive, but yeah, that was kind of fun. At least after when we found out it was Bob who did it, so. That was I, I, I think it's right, and I think that's an important lesson to learn, you know, just because there is interaction with a, whether it's a honey pot, a honey service, a honey account, it's still an event. It's an event that needs to be investigated. It could be malicious, it could be attackers, uh, but at the same time, there could be a, a logical explanation around that. In, it, it's just a part of, it's a natural part of any type of security control and uh, understanding that having a response methodology uh, to investigate is extremely important as well. Because if you start, if you deploy these, you're going to start getting information from them. If you're not ready to get that information and uh, react to that, uh, then it's, it, it's not uh, achieving your uh, desired goals. So. Exactly, and as so always, like it is the fence in depth, so that's also the reason why sometimes people ask me, but that does that mean I don't need a firewall anymore? Does that mean I can, you know, decommission my IDS system? And uh, hopefully, as, as this uh, talk has shown, this is a, a, this is an add on to the security to the defense in depth, so it's not a replacement for anything, but it's, it's a very cool way to have uh, high confidence very, very low uh, false positive that something might be going on in your industrial network. And that's definitely something you need to take time to look into. Well, Michael, I really appreciate you coming and talking about honeypots. And you know, uh, thank you very, very much for your expertise on this. Thank you. Thank you very much, Don, and thanks for, for having me. Absolutely. Thank you for tuning in to another concept overview with the SANS ICS and Cutaway Security teams. Please let us know if there are other topics you would like us to cover in the comments below. If you enjoyed the content, please be sure to like and subscribe to the SANS ICS YouTube channel. This has been Don C. Weber of Cutaway Security. Go forth and do good things.